So I'm going to be talking about 3D to 3D coordinate transforms. An excellent reference is this book, Introduction to Robotics by John Craig. It's a very clear description of the coordinate transforms, rotations, etc. And I use the notation that he uses. OK, so 3D coordinate systems have an XYZ uh, coordinate axes, unit vectors. I'm going to denote them as um, uh, you know, frame A in brackets here, frame B in brackets here. So these could be things attached to the camera, the world, or a model that you're trying to locate. So we have to describe the position orientation or pose of a frame B, for example, with respect to frame A. We'll use a translation vector, which is the position of B in A, the origin of B, and the rotation, the orientation of frame B with respect to frame A. Uh, as we'll see, that rotation is can be expressed as a 3 by 3 matrix, and uh, it re it's going to represent three angles, unlike one angle in a 2D coordinate system. So let's look at rotations in 3D and how to describe them. Um, so we've seen how a rotation of a two-dimensional in a two-dimensional plane could be expressed as a two-by-two two matrix that looks like this: the cosine, sine, sine, cosine. So if we think of doing a 2D rotation um, just about one of the axes of the 3D frame, we'd get the same thing. We just leave a one here, so we don't change the axis that we're rotating about. And we have the two by two matrix for the axes that are changing. Um, here we're going to be using the convention that a, uh, if we draw it like this, a dot of course points toward me, and a, if, I, if I drew an X, that would be the axis pointing away from me. So that would describe the rotation uh, about the X axis. We could also do about the Y axis, in which case the Y doesn't change but only we have this two by two um, rotation matrix for the X and Z. And then we could also do the same thing for rotations about the Z axis where the two by two matrix sits up here. Um, one thing to be a little careful about is note the sign of the sign. It's a negative here and a negative here, but a positive here. And the reason is that we're going to be using the convention that a positive angle rotation is a rotation. If you were to put your right thumb in the direction, let's say if I rotate about the y axis here, I mean, sorry about the x axis, um, I, I point my right thumb toward me and my fingers then curl in the direction of a positive rotation. So, um, that's true here, that's why we get this negative sign. Here, a positive rotation rotates actually z to x instead of x to z. So that's why we flipped those signs there. So anyway, just something to be aware of um, that the y is treated a little differently. OK, look a little bit closer at this 3D rotation matrix. Uh, what is it? So we can create an arbitrary 3D rotation matrix by just combining the rotations about the individual axes. So in this case, we would first apply a rotation about x, and then a y, and then a z. And we'd wind up with a 3x3 three three matrix like this. So you can think of this as a transformation from one frame to another. Um, I'm going to use this notation where the a Let's say if I have an A on the bottom and a B on the top like that, that indicates a rotation from frame A to frame B. And you can also think of that as it's a matrix that could transform a vector from one frame to another. So um, to transform a vector in frame A to a vector in frame B, uh, I would multiply by the rotation matrix from A to B. And just like we saw with two-dimensional rotation matrices, they're orthonormal. So the inverse of a rotation matrix is just its transpose. OK, um, to get some insight into these rotation matrices, uh, it's very helpful to note that the 
elements of the rotation matrix are direction cosines. What that means is they're projections of, of the unit vectors, the XYZ unit vectors, from one frame uh, into the unit vectors of the other frame. So to see this, let's apply a rotation matrix to a unit vector. So let me take um, an R composed of an R11, R12, R13, 21, 22, 23, 31, 32, and 33. And I'll apply that to a um, unit vector uh, in the x axis. So that's, um, let's say that's the rotation from A to B of the unit vector X in the A frame. Okay. So it's the unit vector of A expressed in A, which is just going to be a 1, 0, 0. So if I multiply that out, I get uh, R11 times 1, which is R11, plus R12 times 0, plus R13 times 0. So that's the first element. The second element is R21 times 1, plus R22 times 0, plus R23 times 0. The third element is R31 times 1, plus R32 times 0, etc. So what we essentially get is the first element of um, I mean, I'm sorry, the first column of the rotation matrix. So this is the, ro the unit vector x now transformed to the B coordinate system. So the columns of R, of your rotation matrix, are the unit vectors of A expressed in the B frame. And likewise, you can show that the rows of R are the unit vectors of B expressed in the A-frame. So this is very helpful to check to see if your rotation matrix makes sense. Um, to see how you would create this in MATLAB, let me just pull up MATLAB here. Um, let's see. going to copy this text here and paste it into my MATLAB. Okay, so what I've done is I've defined angles AX, AY, AZ and formed the individual rotations RX, RY, and RZ. So I'll create a composite. Well, let me just show you the individual ones. Here's RX, RY, and RZ. So Compositing those um, in the order RZ times RY times RX, that gets me a 3x3 three three rotation matrix. Um, the order does matter. If I were to do it in the opposite order, I would get a different result. So as you can see here, some of the elements are different here. So you have to be careful. You have to define what convention, what order you're using, and stick to it. Okay, we can use, <coughs> excuse me, we can think of um, a transformation as transforming a point from one coordinate frame to another, uh, in which case we'll need a uh, rotation and a translation. So. <coughs> Excuse me. The translation here, if I'm transforming a point from B representation to A representation, I'm going to add the um, translation vector, which is the location of B in the A frame. So I'm going to write this like this. It's B origin in A. And just like we did in 2D, uh, coordinate systems, we can define homogeneous coordinates for a 3D frame. And that lets us write a transformation with a single matrix instead of a rotation plus a translation. So we just put a 1 as an additional fourth element, 
and uh, treat it as uh, if it ever becomes a not one, we have to divide through by that. So essentially we are um, treating all scaled versions of, a, of this four vector as equivalent. And we're going to treat the uh, leading superscript as the representation of what frame the point is represented in. So that allows us to write a, a um, transformation of a point as a single matrix multiplication of a 4x4 four four matrix, where the 3x3 three three here is the rotation and the 3x1 is the translation. So just to repeat, a general rigid transformation is a rotation followed by a translation, and we can write it as a 4x4 four four matrix H. And the notation here we're going to use, uh, I mentioned that this leading subscript is the from, and the leading superscript is the to. But it's nice because uh, the convention is we multiply these together, we simply cancel out the leading subscript with the trailing superscript. 